Oh my god. Look at all these buttons and look at all these dials. I always like to get a shot like this because it just looks, it makes this thing look horrific. And there, there at the far distance of this field of buttons, we've got uh, we've got Keith Rust hanging out at the studio board. <laughs> Pretending that I know what they mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but I bet you we do know what uh, a lot of these mean. Let me switch around behind okay. you real quick. So Keith, um, there's a lot of buttons and a lot of dials on this board, as we Indeed. just said. And um, I, I know a little secret, though, that I know you know. Okay. And that is that if you know what one row of these things do, does, you basically have a pretty good handle on 80% of the board. You've just given away a major industry trade secret. Oh, so. well, sorry about that. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so let's just talk about this from the bottom up, I guess. Okay. And we don't have to describe everything because you and I might not even know. And we don't have to know because we have an engineer, right? right? And That's his job. Yeah, you run this place, but you got engineers that know this thing inside and out. Um, so, right down to the bottom of the screen. These uh, are the faders that yep. control, typically it controls the monitor volume of what you're recording, or in mix mode, it re controls the monitor volume of what you're mixing. That's what the big fader does. Okay. The small fader in tracking or recording controls the mic input to your recorded medium, which in our world is Pro Tools. So that's the microphone volume sent to the specific track that you designate. Okay. And you also have pan control. Which is uh, left and right left for and those right. who don't know. This section is the send, and you can send this signal to, if you're recording, you can send it to headphones so that everyone can make their own headphone mix. If you're mixing, these sends are designated to send to outboard reverb and delay devices or okay. anything else you want to patch it into. Then the next section up? Above that, you have equalization, so that's uh, treble and bass. These can be applied either to the microphone so that it goes to the uh, hard disk as you're recording, or it can be applied only in mixing, or it can be applied both ways. Sure. We have in front of that it, compression and expansion, and so this console has built in analog compression, which means you can compress the signal as it goes to the hard disk, or you can compress it in the mix process. And we're talking about audio compression. Audio right? compression. Meaning right. it turns it up when it's too soft and turns it down when it's too hot. Right. And then the next section's up, we've got... Uh, uh, above that, you have phantom power, you have some assignment functions, and this is actually the assignment grid to tell it which track you want to go to. So whichever button you push assigns it to an output of the console, and that output feeds a specific input of the recording device. So you got 24 some odd buttons or however many, but you really only need to know what one of those buttons do, because you're only going to push one, most likely, which is going to send it to a specific channel. Right. So that's very cool. And uh, so just going down the, the row, um, if you just take one row, um, and I'm going to ask you to point if you would. Okay. Bottom fader is going to handle uh, monitor. Right. Next fader up is going to handle uh, your mix or uh, or your recording levels, if right. I got it right. Mm -hmm. Next up is... Um, These are the sends. Sends. Next up is... EQ. Next up... Compression and expansion. And then... The assignment. And that's it. If you got that down, and I realize, you know, you might want to take, you know, a week or two really to learn what all those things are, but it's not unknowable. And once you've got it, it just is repeated over and over and over again. Right. In our case, 40 times. Some of these can be 96 or 100 times. Big film studios have gigantic consoles. Over here, we got a patch bay, uh, which allows you to route certain things to other things. And I, you know, I don't even know in this particular studio what that might be. But in some cases, you might route stuff out to effects units or, or uh, whatever. It actually starts with the microphones. Those mic panels in the studio oh, okay, very good. aren't tied specifically to one input. We can patch those. So this allows you to patch it to which channel you're going to use to right. manipulate it from. Okay, excellent. And then everything else can be patched. We have outboard gear behind the engineer. All of that is accessed through the patch bay and that's um, sent to and from. There are um, inserts on each module and that's how you access the outboard equipment. Okay, and that central uh, the, the central area, without going into a whole lot of detail, in general, what are you doing with that? the uh, the central quadrant of the board? This is communication to the studio. You have talkback to headphones. You have monitor volume. You have which device you want to have as your monitor source, whether it's the speakers out there or a CD for playback. Uh, you have computer control. And these are all of the main masters for the SINs. Uh, then auxiliary things like uh, oscillators and test tones. 
just all of the central commands for routing and monitoring. And where do you plot the star system that you're going to be going to? <laughs> oh, oh, that's a different interview. Sorry. Yeah, that's that. what the lava lamp does. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. <laughs> Very good. So that's the uh, the control room and what goes on here. Uh, to a certain extent, I realize that that was a real high level view that we gave everybody, and I've of course got Very more brief. more in depth stuff out there uh, that I have posted where we go into a lot of what what those individual controls are for. Again. You don't need to know all that stuff. You're going to be recording and maybe producing yourself. You are not going to have to know what all those things are, but it's a good idea to have a sense of them so that you know what the engineer is doing or, or have a, a clue of what the engineer is doing and you don't have to ask silly questions about uh, about the board that you know almost everybody should kind of know. Right. <laughs> That's my thought process on this. So, uh, very good. Well, I, I'm uh, going to come back with uh, at least one more uh, post with Keith. But uh, Keith, this is a great tour. We really appreciate it. Thanks. Glad to have you here. So Keith Rust at Crystal Clear Sound Studios in Dallas, Texas, and I'm Ryan Michael Galloway with We Don't Need No Stinking Record Company.com.